With the word of God in his hands, every human being, wherever his lot and life may be cast, may have such companionship as he shall choose. In its pages, he may hold converse with the noblest and best of the human race, and may listen to the voice of the Eternal as he speaks with men, as he studies and meditates upon the themes into which the angels desire to look he may have their companionship. He may follow the steps of the heavenly teacher and listen to his words as when he taught on mountain and plain and sea. He may dwell in this world in the atmosphere of heaven, imparting to earth's sorrowing and tempted ones, thoughts of hope and longings for holiness, himself coming closer and still closer into fellowship with the unseen, like him of old who walked with God, drawing nearer and nearer the threshold of the eternal world until the portal shall open and he shall enter there. He will find himself no stranger. The voices that will greet him are the voices of the holy ones, Voices who unseen were on earth his companions. Voices that here he learned to distinguish and to love. He who through the word of God has lived in fellowship with heaven will find himself at home in heaven's companionship. Education, page 127, paragraph 1. God is good and all the time. Thank you very much for coming back to the final, what I believe is the final segment of this blessed weekend, which God has privileged me to be a part of. Is there anyone present now you were not present this morning? May I see your hand? Thank you for joining us. May the Lord bless you. God bless you. I'm delighted to see you. Is there anyone with us? You are not a Seventh-day Adventist. You are here in this session for the first time this weekend. May I see your hand? First time. First time, first time. All right. Whether you're an Adventist or not, the Bible says, for God so loved the world. The Bible says God is not willing that any should perish. If you're a human being, it is God's desire to save you. But in the work of redemption, God requires the cooperation of man. In other words, we must work with God. The most popular verse in the Bible says this. You can say it with me. For God so loved the world. Now, that's God. He loved us without our permission. That he gave his only begotten son. He did not need our permission. That whosoever believeth, ah, that's our part, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Eloi tells us those who take the position that Christ has done it all and that they need not obey his requirements will fail of everlasting life. There are some people who believe Christ died and so he did everything. He did everything he had to do. You and I have work to do to cooperate with God in the salvation of our souls. Are you happy to be here? Say yes. yes. All right. I am privileged to be with you. I will not hold you long. I see you fanning energetically as a form of exercise based on what you heard earlier. But as I said this morning, it's a privilege to be alive, to feel warm. These things are, well, <laughs> I didn't say that. I just said these things are, and that as far as I will go. But God bless whoever set them up. Now, our subject for this afternoon, pruning and polishing. What did I say? Pruning and polishing. Before I get into that, if you have one of these things that ring from time to time, please turn them off if you're not using them. If you are, turn off the sound. You don't need sound to read the text. All of this is in order to give God the reverence that he so richly deserves. The second favor I ask is that you pray for me while I'm speaking. All I ask you to say is, Lord, put your words in that man's mouth. That request is not a joke. I am intensely serious. If you pray that prayer, God will answer because the Bible says, this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us to ask God, 
to give me his words is absolutely his will, and he will answer that prayer. And so pray that prayer from time to time. Lord, put your words in that man's mouth. In the spirit of Jeremiah 1 verse 9, God bless you, my handsome brother. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth, and I want to speak God's words, and God is my witness to that desire. Favor number three, think as you listen. You must think. Isaiah 1.18, come now, do what? Let us reason. To, what a tremendous honor. The devil does not reason. We serve a reasonable God. We have an unreasonable enemy. God says to you and me, come now, let us reason together. What a gracious God. Let us pray to him. Father in heaven, thank you for the privilege you've given to us to call upon your name 24 hours a day. We thank you you never slumber nor sleep. We thank you to God that you give individual attention to everyone who calls upon you. Lord, immediately forgive us if we've sinned against you. Cleanse us, dear God, because our only problem is sin. Now, Father, grant me a measure of your spirit that he may empower me to deliver the words of life. And let the self-same spirit enlighten all those who are listening in this building and online. Bless us the same way I pray. Father in heaven, if they're guests among us, touch them in a very, very special way and put a double blessing on all the children. Thank you, dear God, for loving us, God. Thank you for loving us despite who we are. Now I commit this service to your glory. I offer this prayer in Jesus' name. Let God's people say, Amen and Amen. What's our subject? Pruning and polishing. This morning we talked about what? Behold, the bridegroom cometh. And we were reminded that a short form of bridegroom is groom. And the act of grooming is preparing something, polishing something, getting something or someone ready. And Christ, through his spirit, grooms his bride so that they can come quickly when Christ and his second selves are finally together fully. Because right now he's above and we are below because he's human. He cannot be everywhere at the same time. That is part of the cost of your salvation and mine. That a change was made in the Godhead. That one member of the Godhead is now in human form even while he's still divine. Tremendous price to pay for the salvation of souls. Let's take a look at the enemy of our souls. Let's look at the devil a little bit. We're not glorifying him, but it is wise to know who your enemy is. Let us go to Hebrews chapter 2. We shall read verse 14. Hebrews 2, reading from verse 14. It is 10 minutes after 3. I'll release you before 4 o'clock. What book did I say? What chapter? 2. Reading from what verse? 14. If you have my version, you may feel free to read with me. When you found it, say amen. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him, read with me now, that had what? The power of death, keep reading, that is the devil. And deliver them, next verse, who through fear of death were all their lifetime Subject to bondage. Now, who has the power of death, according to verse 14? The devil. What form of bondage do many people find themselves in? They are afraid, come on, of death. Not realizing that through his death, Christ destroyed him that had the power of death. Anyone whose life is led and possessed by Christ ought not to be afraid of death. But what I want to stress is he destroyed him that had the power of death. Together unto Pilate saying, Sir, we remember that that deceiver said while he was yet alive, after three days, I will rise again. They said, Pilate, Mr. Pilate, sir, we heard, what did they call him? That deceiver. <laughs> Who is the deceiver? Satan. What were they virtually calling Christ? Mm-hmm. 
You accuse him of satanic behavior. You're calling him Satan. But that's the way the world is. We remember that that deceiver said, while he was yet alive, after three days I will rise again. First, next verse, 64. Command, therefore, that the sepulcher be made what? Sure, till the third day, lest his disciples come and steal by night and steal him away and, and say to the people, he is risen from the dead. So the last error shall be worse than the first. They are telling Pilate, do something to accomplish what? To keep, to keep Jesus where? In a grave. Or to keep Jesus dead. We want him to stay, come on, dead. Who was it doing that? Now they went to Pilate. But let's go to Revelation 12. Let's read from verse 1 of Revelation 12. Our subject, pruning and polishing. Do you have Revelation 12? We read from verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. And upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And it still drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and it cast him to the earth. Now read with me now. And the dragon did what? Stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child. Finish it. As soon as it was born. Now, the Bible says the devil is the one doing this because he's the dragon. Verse 9 says, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So when we read about this great red dragon in verse 3, uh, verse 4, this is verse 3 and 4, this is Satan. But Satan works through agents. Who tried to kill Christ? Go to Matthew 2. Matthew 2. Let's read verse 16. Our subject, pruning and polishing. Are you at Matthew 2 verse 16? You have my version, read with me. What does that say? Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth. And sent forth and did what slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coast there under from two years old and under. Pause. Whom is he trying to reach? Jesus. The wise men did not go back to Herod to report that they had seen Jesus. An angel told him in a vision, go back to your home another way. Herod was furious. He decided, I've got to catch Christ in a bloody net. But it wasn't so much Herod. Who was it? Satan doing what? Working through Herod. As he worked on a larger scale through the Roman Empire. As he works on a larger scale through the Holy Roman Empire. Are you listening to me? As he worked through the scribes and Pharisees who said, crucify him. As he works through individual members of the church. Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers. When someone is being demonic to you, you've got to look beyond the flesh and blood. And understand, there's a demon at work in that person. Now, Satan wanted to kill Christ at an early age. Satan's is the power of death. We read in Matthew 27, 62, that he, the, 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 the chief priests and Pharisees came to, to Pilate saying, make the sepulcher sure. Lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say, he's risen from the dead. We have to do something to keep him dead. Who was actually at work? Come on, tell me. Satan working through the chief priests, the Pharisees, members of the church. And of course, Pilate, the government. Keeping dead. Pilate said unto them, Ye have a watch, go your way, make it as sure as you can. Last verse of Matthew 27. So they went and made the sepulchre sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. Pilate said, Do everything in your power to make sure that grave does not open. But we know that Christ came from the dead. 
What I'm trying to say to you, Satan's desire is to keep you dead. There's a form of death that's not physical, it's spiritual. You're running around physically but spiritually dead. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 5, let's read verse 6. 1 Timothy 5, let's read verse 6. Our subject, pruning and polishing. Do you have 1 Timothy? Remember to tell me, slow down, when I am going too quickly. Thank you, God bless you. <laughs> Whoever you are, you sound like a nice person. 1 Timothy chapter 5, let's read verse 6. When you found it, say amen. You read it for me. But she that liveth in pleasure, come on, is dead while she liveth. Now let's be gender inclusive. She or he that lives in pleasure. Replace the word pleasure with a smaller word. Sin is dead while the person lives. Now, what did we learn about the devil? He wants to keep you dead. You're not following me. Are you following me? Yeah. All those following me, measure your hand. Some of you are not. Okay. The devil's desire is to keep us or keep those in sin dead. We're talking about pruning and polishing. Knowing this, let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. Let's read 16. Of 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. Let's read 16. We read 16, 17. Do you have it? 1 Corinthians 15, verse 16 and verse 17. Thanks for asking. I appreciate your checking. When you found it, say amen. Read with me. For if the dead rise not, come on, then is Christ not raised. Keep reading. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain, ye are yet in your sins. What are we learning from this? The resurrection of Christ from the dead is the guarantee of a larger resurrection to come. Are you with me? The fact, go to John 14. Let's emphasize that. John 14. Let's read 16 to 19. This is Christ speaking to the disciples. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me. Now read with me. Because... I live, come on, you shall live also. Mm -hmm. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the unbreakable guarantee that the saints that sleep will rise. Are you understanding me? If Jesus had not risen from the grave, no one else could come from the grave. Satan knows that. So he wanted to keep Christ, come on, dead. Keep him in the grave. He does the same thing. With spiritual death. Keep him in alcoholism. Keep him in drugs. Keep him in whatever. Keep that soul dead. The devil does everything to keep us dead in sin. Because death is his forte. It's his speciality. What is the speciality of Jesus Christ? Tell me quickly. Life. Life. But more abundantly. Now. Let's go to Ephesians 5. Let's read verse 14. Ephesians 5, verse 14. Do you have Ephesians 5, verse 14? Read with me. Wherefore he saith, what? Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead. Now, this is spiritual. Awake thou that sleepest. This is death. Spiritual death. And arise from the dead. Now, that's the word of God. The word of God says, arise from the dead. I hope you're listening to what I'm saying. Go to uh, John 11. John 11. 
Let's read verse 43 and 44. Pruning and polishing is our subject. Remember favor number three? Think, think, think. Thinking is hard work. Most people don't like to do it. They want someone else to think for them. That's why we have tyrants. You think for me. Let no one think for you. What book did I say? What chapter? 11 verses 43 and 44. Where is Christ located in that chapter? What's that chapter well known for? The resurrection of Lazarus. Now, before we read 43, 44, let me remind you of Ephesians 5, 14. Wherefore he saith, awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead. Now, awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead are the same thing. How does the Bible represent death? As a sleep. Awake thou that sleepest, hmm? arise from the dead. Same thing. Keep this in mind. Now, verse 43, John 11, let me pray first. Father, as I continue, the enemy is angry, but Father, you can overpower him. Simply that I may speak with freedom. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice. Come on, you take it up now. Lazarus. Come forth, keep reading, and he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot. Now, he that was dead. This is physical resurrection. Let me ask you this. Look at John eleven forty three. Lazarus, come forth, and look at Ephesians five fourteen. Arise from the dead. Which one is more powerful? They're just, ah, whoever said they're the same blessings upon you. The same power in Lazarus come forth is in a rise from the dead. The same power that raised Lazarus physically will raise the sinner spiritually. You see, Satan has the power of death. But when Jesus tells that dead person, wake up. When Jesus says, rise, the devil has to let go. Whether you're rising from the grave of alcohol, the grave of drugs, the grave of pornography, the grave of self-abuse, the grave of whatever, the grave of materialism, when Jesus says, rise from the dead, if that person receives that word, Satan has to let go. Mm, no choice. But notice the instrument God uses to raise the dead. What's the instrument? Aha. Uh -huh. His word. Lazarus, come forth. The widow of Nain in Luke 14, Luke 7. When Jesus came to the coffin of the, the dead boy, he said, Young man, I say unto thee, arise. What happened? The young man arose. What's our subject? Pruning and polishing. And I told you earlier today, I will give you the instrument of the, gride, the, the, the grooming activity of Christ. The pruning, the polishing. And that instrument is his word. Let me tell you why the word of God. Satan cannot do anything about the word of God. Go to Ezekiel 28. Fast, quickly, quickly, quickly. This is an Adventist congregation. Stop looking at the New Testament. Ezekiel is in the old. Do you have, do you have Ezekiel? Okay. Ezekiel 28. Do you have that? Let's read from verse 13. This year we're reading biographical information about Lucifer before he fell. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, topaz, the diamond. What's the next three? The beryl, the onyx, the jasper. What's the next three? The sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, and the last one, and gold. The workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee. Finish that verse. In the day that thou was created. Ah. Lucifer, come on, was created. Read verse 15. Thou was perfect in thy ways. Come on. In the day, from the day that thou was created. Understand me clearly. Lucifer was created. Lucifer was, and still is, an angel. Now he's a wicked angel. Back then he was a holy angel. He was created. Now go to Psalm 148. Read verses 1, 2, and 5. What's our subject? 
pruning and polishing. Oh, you put polishing first, same thing. Do you have uh, Psalm 148? Let's read from verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise ye him all his angels. Notice that. Praise ye him all his angels. Praise ye him all his hosts. Praise ye him sun and moon. Praise ye me stars of light. Praise ye me heaven of heavens and ye waters that be above the heavens. Five now. Let them praise the name of the Lord. Finish the verse. For he commanded. Come on. And they were created. Who was created by command? Look at verse 2. Read verse 2. Angels. Let me put it a little more clearly. When God made angels, he did not use dirt. Anything else. He just spoke and angels appeared. Patriarchs and prophets, page 38, paragraph 3. Christ was the son of God. He had been one with him before the angels were called into existence. You're listening to me, you're watching me. But I feel all alone. Nobody's following me. Do you understand what I'm saying? Here's a, a, a platform, a pulpit. It's empty. And God stands at one end and said, let there be people. And people appear on the platform. Let there be angels. And angels appeared. God created angels out of nothing. The word brought them into existence. The Ministry of Healing, page 415, 414, paragraph 4, paragraph 5, 414, paragraph 5. Everything material or spiritual stood up before the Lord Jehovah at his voice. Now, notice the wording. Everything material or spiritual stood up before the Lord Jehovah at his voice. What does she mean by spiritual? A horse isn't spiritual. A tree isn't spiritual. She has to be referring to beings. Listen to me carefully. Every angel, every being created by the word of God. But let's focus on one. Who's that? Lucifer. He was created. Now we know. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. Bible Commentary, Volume 1, page 1081, paragraph 1. What did I say? <laughs> this is the last presentation. Surprise me. Bible Commentary, Volume 1, page 1081, paragraph 1. What did I say? All right, okay, okay. Let's put an end to your misery. Here's what the servant of the Lord writes. God spoke, and his word created his works in the natural world. God spoke, and his word created his works in the natural world. Ministry of Healing, page 414, paragraph 5. All things material or spiritual stood up before the Lord Jehovah at his voice. Then she goes on to say, the heavens and all the hosts of them, the earth and all things therein, came into existence at the breath of his mouth. He spoke and life came now. Which means, here's a quick question. About, let me pray again. Fathers, I continue. Please, please be with me there, God. Please, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Here is the word that creates. Are you with me? Here is the thing that's created. You tell me which is more powerful. The word that creates. Now, let's be more particular. Here is the word of God. Here is Satan. Are you with me? Which is more powerful? The word of God. No brainer. No liver, no kidney, no nothing. Now, go to Matthew 8. Matthew 8. You just correctly said the word of God that creates is more powerful than that which it creates. In this case, Lucifer, who is now Satan. Matthew 8, read verse 16, our subject, pruning and polishing. 
Are you still not telling me to slow down? You're nice, but please rebuke me. Are you at Matthew 8? Verse 16. If you have my version, read with me. What, do I, what does that say? And when the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with. Stop. Not bothered by devils. Possessed. There are two different things. A child of God can be bothered by the devil. Was Christ bothered by the devil? Was Job bothered by the devil? Was Paul bothered by an evil spirit? Were they possessed? No. God has to allow Satan to have some access to us to test us. Now, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. Finish that verse. And he cast out the spirits. How? With his word. Stop. That's fine. That's fine right there. He cast out the spirits with his word. The devil has no power against the word of God. That's why he keeps us away from the word of God. The devil is not intimidated if you are the head deacon and the head deacon is all at the same time. <laughs> that doesn't bother him. And the treasurer, <laughs> you've all been the janitor. All he wants is to ensure that you stay away from this. Or if you go into it, that you're confused. Because he knows this is a power he cannot resist. In Testimonies, volume 1, page 341, paragraph 1, the servant of the Lord writes, God alone can limit the power of Satan. Testimonies, volume 1, page 341, paragraph 1, God alone can limit the power of Satan. Testimonies, volume 5, page 448, paragraph 2. Jesus can limit the power of Satan. Are you following me? Evangelism, page 617, paragraph 2. The prince of the power of evil can only be held in check by the power of God in the third person of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit. We have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit alone that can control Satan. She does not mention Gabriel. Now, why am I saying that? Bible Commentary, Volume 5, page 1083, paragraph 1. Bear in mind, it is none but God that can hold an argument with Satan. I am not glorifying Satan. I want to lift up the power of God's word. Bear in mind, it is none but God who can hold an argument with Satan. Christ triumphant, page 190, paragraph 5. She said, Christ had been warned not to enter into controversy with Satan. In his humanity. Don't argue with the devil. This is Jesus. Only God can successfully argue with the devil. And God's voice is right here. When Christ said to the man at the pool of Bethesda, rise, take up thy bed, and walk. We must apply that spiritually. Because there are many people who have been sick 38 years like the man of Bethesda. Are you following me? They've been a condition all their lives. They have cried. Cried to be released. The word of God says to them, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. The word of God says to them, Ephesians 5.14, Arise, awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead. Now, the person who receives that word by surrender to it must be let go by Satan. Because Satan cannot hold the dead when Christ tells them, Arise. Because Satan has no power against the power that created him. Now, Satan is powerful. Testimonies, volume 1, page 342, paragraph 1. The servant of the Lord writes, All should understand that Satan was once an exalted angel. His rebellion shut him out of heaven, but did not destroy his powers and make him a beast. All the power he had 
While he was holy, he brought with him when he was thrown out. You need a power that exceeds that power. And that power is the word of God. What's our subject? Pruning. How does God do it? With the word of God. And I wanted to show you the power of God's word against the devil. Because this is the power that created him. And this power can control him. The word of God. Now, go with me to John chapter 15. It's about 20 minutes to 4. Or close to it. John 15. Let's read from verse 1. Who has prayed for me and said, Lord, put your words in that. Ah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. The rest of you who are so lovingly rebellious, please pray for me and say, Lord, put your words in that man's mouth. Let me pray again. Father, please, please let my voice be your voice, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. John 15, reading from verse 1, read it with me. I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now, read the next verse. Now ye are clean. Same word as purge. How? Through the word which I have spoken unto you. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. That's why I want to speak God's words. My words cannot purify you. Let's go back to what we read. Was it today or this morning? This morning, Ephesians 5. We read from verse 25. Our subject, pruning and polishing. Now it's 20 to 4. You have Ephesians 5. Let's read from verse 25. The Bible says, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church, and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it. What's our subject? Pruning. Yeah, you can see sanctify and cleanse. That he might sanctify and cleanse it. How? With the washing of water. Come on. By the word. That he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but it should be holy and without blemish. And what's the detergent he uses? The word of God. The bridegroom, he grooms his church. And the instrument of grooming is the word of God. Listen to these stirring words from Ellen White. Christ's Object Lessons, page 100, paragraph 1. If studied and obeyed. My favorite word in all the world is obey. If studied, this, and obeyed, the word of God works in the heart, subduing every unholy attribute. But there's a condition. If, come on. If studied nah, and you must know what you're obeying, so you study first. Are you following me? If studied and obeyed, the word of God works in the heart. The word of God worked to create the light. All God said was, let there be light. He did nothing else. The word of God created the light. The word of God created the firmament. The word of God is the agent of creation spiritually and physically. If studied and obeyed, the word of God works in the heart. Subduing. Every unholy attribute. There's no weakness that can stand up to the word of God applied. Psalm 119 verse 9. You know it. Don't go there. Just say. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? Finish the verse. By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Young man or young woman. Old man or old woman. This is a cleansing agent. This is the power. By the way, it is the spirit-filled word of God by which Christ dwells in the disciples. And you and I are his disciples. Let's go to John 17. John 17. Christ is praying. The disciples are listening to him as he prays. Right after the prayer, he's in the Garden of Gethsemane, John 18. He's praying. Verse 12 
While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept. And none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that a scripture might be fulfilled. And now I am no more in the world, and these in the world, and I come to thee. That's verse 11. Holy Father, keep to thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one. So you add 12 and 11, and Christ is saying that he has kept them through the word of the Father, which is the word of Christ, which is the Bible. And now I come to thee, these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled of themselves. Verse 14. Have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them. Why? Because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldst take them out of the world. Finish the verse. Ah, keep them from the evil. Which evil? All evil. I pray not that thou shouldst take them out of the world. They have to be in the world until I come to get them. But that thou shouldst keep them from the evil. Jesus prayed that prayer, and he will explain how the Father should do it. Verse 16, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Now, he recommends to the Father what the Father already knows. Now, here is how you keep them from the evil for which he prayed in verse 15. Read verse 17 for me. Come on. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is, look at 15 again. Read 15 out loud. I pray not that thou shouldst take them out of the world, but that thou shouldst keep them from the evil. Stop. Can you live an upright life in a corrupt world? Yes or no? Yes. Is it required? Yes. Stop blaming where you grew up. I pray not that thou shouldst take them out of the world, but that thou shouldst keep them from the evil. Now, God is all powerful. Can God keep us from the evil? Keep in mind, Jesus is praying. And when he was at the tomb of Lazarus, he said, Father, I knew that thou heardst me and that thou hearest me always. That's what Jesus said. The Father is listening and the Father will not so note, say no to Christ. And Christ is telling the Father, keep them from the evil. But the Father needs our cooperation. Are you following me? He wants to answer the prayer of his son. He needs our cooperation. Jesus tells the Father, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth, which means error cannot sanctify you. False doctrines cannot sanctify you. If truth sanctifies, error contaminates. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. My brothers and sisters, the groom, bridegroom, Jesus Christ himself, the instrument of pruning, polishing, and grooming, finish my words. Come on, finish the words. The instrument of pruning, the instrument of polishing, the instrument of grooming, the word of God. Now, Jesus when he was tempted by Satan, Matthew 4, but he answered and said, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone. You finish it for me, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Let's examine that verse carefully. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, Christ is replying to Satan. Who said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, it is written, man, who is man? Come on, who's man? People, did he include himself? Yes. He was a man. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. But what did he mean by man shall not live? What do you understand by live by bread alone? Is it only physically? Do we have an economic life? Come on. Do we have a professional life? Do some of us have an educational life? And a family life? And a social life? And a recreational life? Yes, we do. Jesus says, every area of your life should be lived how? By the word of God. That life, the devil cannot conquer. You can't live your life by the word of God two hours a, day, a week in church on Sabbath. It has to be the guiding principle and the energizing force 
24 hours a day, seven days a week, because it is the word itself that does the cleansing in our hearts. Go with me to uh, Galatians chapter 5. It's uh, 12 minutes to 4. I'll do everything in my power to release you by 4. Did I say at 4 or before 4? What did I say? I said before 4. Do you accept repentance and confession of sin? <laughs> okay, let's go to Galatians 5. Galatians 5. Do you have it? Let's read from verse 19. We want to expose why we're so frustrated in the battle of sin. Pruning and polishing. Galatians 5 verse 19. Read with me. Now the works of the flesh are manifest which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. They are described in verse 19 as the works of the flesh. That's what the flesh does. Are you with me? What's the opposite to the flesh? The Spirit. Now, let's read from verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temper. Now, we have two lists. We have the works of the flesh, 19 to 21. That's what you and I do without any help from God. The fruits of the Spirit are not the fruits of human beings. They are the fruits of whom? So who produces them? The Spirit, not you. When you set about to produce the fruits of the Spirit, you will end up in frustration deeper than a dungeon. You and I are not qualified to produce the fruits of the Spirit. The fruits of the Spirit are produced by the Spirit working from within. And how does he get within? Through his word. One major way. Listen to me again. You cannot of yourself produce love, joy, peace. Why? The flesh cannot produce these things. Listen to what Jesus says. Let us go to John chapter 6. Let's read verse 63. John 6, 63. You have that? And nobody answered the preacher as usual. Okay, no. <laughs> okay. It's okay, I forgive you. I'm accustomed now to your arctic demeanor. All right, do you have John 6, 63? <laughs> All right. Read with me. What does that say? It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. Stop. The flesh, Jesus says, profiteth what? Nothing. Go to Romans 7. You have John, Acts, then Romans. Do you have Romans 7? Read verse 18 for me. What's that saying? For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, come on, dwelleth no good thing. Now, Paul says the flesh has no good thing. Jesus says the flesh profiteth nothing. How can the flesh produce love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness? What the flesh produces is adultery, fornication, and cleanness. That list from 19 to 21 of Galatians 5. But it requires a power outside ourselves to produce love, joy, Peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. And that power is the power of the Spirit of God working through the Word. My brothers and sisters, friends, wherever you are, in person, online, this must be your priority. Not your career. I said priority. Priority means number one. You have the expression numero uno. The big kahuna. Number one. This. How did Jesus live? By every word. How is he pruning the bride or grooming the bride? By the word. Now, go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. You don't understand the dynamite you have in your hand when you hold the Bible in your hand. I mean divine dynamite. Not what we use to blow up buildings, divine dynamite. 
What book did I say? First Thessalonians, what chapter? Four, you know, reading from verse 16, you should know this without looking. You have First Corinthians, First Thessalonians 4, 16. I'm coming to the end, Father, as I approach the end, continue to help me in Jesus' name, amen. Read with me, for the Lord himself, who is the Lord himself? Jesus, notice the, 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 the grammar, the Lord himself, no doubt. The verse could have said, for the Lord will descend. It says, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. How? With a shout. That's, he's going to say something, but he's, the shout means he will say it how? Loudly. With a shout. Come on, with the voice of the archangel, and that a loud voice. With the trump. Those three expressions simply mean Christ will say something loudly. Now, how did he speak at the grave of Lazarus? John eleven forty three. 43, and when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God. Keep reading. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. How will Christ raise the righteous dead? With his word. His word. Spoken loudly. By the way, on the point of spoken loudly, one way to resist temptation is to speak out loud. Here's what I mean. If you're tempted to do something, you say, in the name of Jesus Christ and by the power of his shed blood, I will not do this right now. You'll be surprised what happens. In the name of Jesus Christ and by the power of his shed blood, I will not steal that thing. I will not cheat on my exam. I will not do that in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, if you're on a bus, don't shout it. Or in a bank somewhere. But when you're by yourself, and if you can't shout, you say it loudly in your head. Genesis 1 verse 3, and God said, let there be light. God spoke out loud. We live in a world created by a loud voice. And Satan is not intimidated by whispers. The loudest voice you and I can speak is this. Let me close it to let you know I'm finishing. The pruning and polishing and grooming of the bride is done by the relentless application of the divine Clorox of God, and that is his word. Sometimes he has to soak you in this Clorox for some days and some weeks and some months because some of our stains are so deep. We've had them since 1942. But if we stay soaked, are you following me? Every day, the stain vanishes. It, it becomes less, less apparent, less apparent until one day it is gone. Because we must grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, this is what created Lucifer. He was created by the word. This is what controls Satan. This is what prunes polishes and grooms the bride and who's the bride i believe i hope you'll consider yourself the bride of christ he's coming for you because you are his second self but we have one self of one species and another self of another species mm -mm. both must be of the same sinless victorious that is why your bridegroom tells you and me in revelation 3 21 to him that overcometh will i grant to sit with me in my throne even as i also overcame the same way by this and i'm sitting down with my father in his throne may the god of heaven and earth who is not willing that any should perish place upon your heart right now a burden to make time for his life-saving word the only power that controls the enemy of your souls. If you think you're in the death of sin, take God's word, Ephesians 5.14, and personalize it. Arise from the dead. Awake thou that sleepest. Arise from the dead and obey that word by receiving it. Because the life of that word is in the word itself. And when you receive that word by faith and surrender, the life of the word brings you to life how many will say father help me to make time for your word regardless of what responsibilities i have help me to make time for your word can i see your hand let god see your hand stand up with me heads bowed eyes closed dear god we all need you 
We're all weak. Paul said, I am the chief of sinners. Peter said, I am a sinful man. Job said, I am vile. Isaiah said, I am undone. If these mighty men of scripture can say those things, what are we supposed to say? Oh, Father, look upon us in our weak condition. Look with pity. There's nothing new you need to do there, God. It is the same old method of conquest. It is the word. So renew, good God, our love for thus saith the Lord. Remind us, Father, we live in a universe that was created by thus saith the Lord. And God said, and God said, and God said, remind us we will be raised by the word. Dear God in heaven, remind us that Jesus cast out demons by his word. He healed by his word. He forgave sins by his word. He did everything by his word. Remind us that you have magnified your word above all your name. Teach your people, dear God, to view the word as priority number one. Not that they might point out sins in others, but that they might grow close to you personally. Dear God, let us cherish a place in your kingdom with you above every other earthly concern, I pray. As we leave, let us leave reflecting on the life-giving word. We thank you for your word. Because those in the Old Testament and the New Testament did not have everything that we have. Thank you, God, that you're not willing that any should perish. When you come and you are coming. Let everyone under the sound of my voice with all the family members be saved in your kingdom. I earnestly pray from my heart in Jesus' name. Let God's people say amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope and pray that this service has uplifted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and that you personally have been drawn closer to Him. If you have any questions or comments, please text us at 909-492-0738 or email us at office at mentonechurch.org. We look forward to seeing you next time. God bless.